Hello class, so in this video, I'm gonna explain what is the nervous control of breathing, okay? So if you think about it, when you breathe, you're not really having to say, okay, I need to breathe. One, breathe, two, breathe, three. It just happens automatically. However, different things that is happening in your life makes you breathe faster or makes you breathe slower. So we're gonna look at what that is. So to look at this, let's look at the brain, okay? In the brain, the region of the brain that is in control of breathing is in the medulla and pons region of the, hind, the brain stem. So right here, the medulla and the pons. And inside the medulla and pons, we already kind of visited this center already with the cardioregulatory center that regulates heart rate, but it also regulates breathing. So this is where the respiratory center is. So what does the respiratory center does is that it takes an information coming in. So info coming in. And then it tells the respiratory center, okay, well, this information coming in is something that needs more air. Okay, so then that's going to send a signal from the respiratory center down to the muscle to allow the muscle to contract. So you have deep and fast breathing. So for example, if you're running, you might be um, sending a signal that says, okay, I want you to turn on, stimulate, on. And when the respiratory center is on or stimulated, then the breathing muscle is gonna increase deep and fast, like that, okay? Versus slow and shallow. So there's different things that's coming in. Okay, so again, that's the overview of what's going on. And I explain it here on the side and there'll be a little bit of practice. And also think about when you're sleeping, what happened to your breathing? When your body says, oh, she's lying down, she's sleeping, what should happen to your breathing? The next slide, a lot of people think is very complicated, but let's break it down. So it goes with the first slide, okay? But we're looking at it in a different way. So what we're looking at here is that we have input coming in. So step one is input the information coming into your respiratory center in the star here that tells you, well, is, am I gonna increase breathing or decrease breathing, okay? And then that is then gonna send a signal to the breathing muscle. Very, very similar to what I explained here. Here, we're just looking through different kinds of examples. There's actually a many varieties of input or um, information coming in. But here, we're gonna look at just three different types, okay? So it's number 1A, 1B, and 1C. And all of this is also explained in detail in the next slide, okay? But here, I'll just put the video to explain that. So 1A is voluntary control. So you do, your brain will allow you what is breathing automatically without you thinking about it, but you do have some voluntary control of breathing. So for example, if you're gonna jump into a pool, you're gonna, you know to hold your breath. So you're gonna <gasps> hold your breath and jump in and you can maybe swim for a minute or so and then you have to breathe again, okay? So you have voluntary control of the breathing, okay? So you're able to say to your brain, <gasps> take a deep breath and now jump in and don't breathe. And then when you're up for air again, you go <gasps> gasp for air, okay? So that's the voluntary control, okay? You can only control that to a certain extent. So it's in past, this is a statement you can kind of, live by, right? It's impossible to hold your breath to kill yourself. What does that mean? Is that you, you, if you, there are some toddlers that will hold their breath when they have a temper tantrum, and they hold until they actually faint. So they hold their breath using voluntary control, incredible voluntary control, but then eventually they're going to pass off, and then your autonomic nervous system will take over, and they'll breathe again. So that is unlimited. You can't really uh, hold your breath forever. There's other stimuli such as pain and emotion. So such as anxiety, panic, or things like that, fear. So that all depends on how a, patient, a person reacts. Some people, when they're in pain, they go, oh my God, I'm in pain. Like really deep breath. And some patients will be like, you know, you have kids when they hurt, fall, they kind of almost like they're like unable to cry. They come to you and they're like, unable to cry it seems like for a minute but it's not really and then eventually they cry and comes on a screeching screen well so it all depends on what is going on with the patient 
okay so that's uh, voluntary control other parts of your brain controlling the breathing okay so that's pretty simple the hardest one is actually looking at the chemoreceptors okay so there's think about chemoreceptors as chemical sensors so there's sensor in your aorta your carotid and then in the brain stem region so what there are is almost like quality control in your blood does it have enough oxygen is it too too much co2 is it the ph not right so those information are going to be processed into your brain so here we're only going to look at um the example of stimulating right so we have if you're too much carbon dioxide trapped in your body that's going to tell your brain like oh my gosh i have too much co2 trapped i'm going to turn on the signal to in my brain center so you're going to go and you're going to blow off all that co2 okay or in the case of low o2 you don't have enough oxygen because you're working your muscles so hard so you can go so that's going to allow a better breathing as well okay and then the lastly is the ph right now just kind of remember that when there's low ph you're going to stimulate breathing and the next unit we're going to learn is acid base so we're going to go into a lot more detail about ph but right now low ph is stimulatory here in the uh, graph i didn't illustrate the opposite so if you have something like high ph low co2 or low o2 or high o2 I and mean, o2 we, we can ignore so you have this two situation of low ph or low co2 that's going to come and tell your brain respiratory center say okay let's um stop breathing so we can re return to homeostasis before we breathe um deeper okay so for example if you have too little co2 and now you're out of homeostasis you might go <gasps> and then once it, it balances out you can go back to normal breathing okay and then the last one is the proprioceptors of the muscles and joint so that's when you move so when you're getting ready you know how some people get ready and they're like okay i'm gonna get ready to go as you move your arms that's telling your brain okay she's gonna get ready to move so then you can um increase breathing um, the most famous example i can think of is that when michael phelps jumps in before he jumps in the pool he does his infamous micro false flip where he goes like this flash his arm that's a lot of proprioception that's telling his body okay he's ready to jump into the pool he needs to have more oxygen okay or usain Bo, he hops around before he starts running okay so those are signals that comes in and uh, on the contrary if you're laying down and going to bed um you're not moving any muscle or any joint just really relaxing and relaxing those muscles that's going to be a negative signal telling your brain you might not need as much oxygen so again look at examples of different um input coming in and how they affect the respiratory center you have a chance to practice this when we uh, look at some practice questions i believe it's here yeah so here is a example of the practice question allowing you to practice that okay this one right here okay so once the respiratory center receives that information either it's either stimulated inhibited or depends on the person let's just say it's stimulated so if a stimulation coming in a positive signal coming into the respiratory center the brain says oh yes we need to do more breathing it's going to send a signal to the respiratory muscles which includes the diaphragm and the intercostals Okay, and then it's gonna make those muscles contract and so you go <sighs> really strong breathing. So increasing the breathing rate and the depth. If it's an inhibition signal coming in to inhibit, then the brain that is gonna be shallow and not so frequent. Okay. So again, it's more honestly simple than it is um complicated but um you want to really break it down to what's coming in what is my respiratory center doing is it stimulating or inhibiting and what's my muscle doing one two and three okay and i explain those here in different um, figures and then i also explain like for example with the ph and oxygen what's an example of uh, of uh stimulation and inhibition okay and then what happens when you stimulate or inhibit what is that doing to the breathing muscles
okay? So give you a chance to practice again uh, with example. I went through one example with the CO2, and then I also have some practice questions that you can work on, okay? So try that. If you have any questions, let me know. Go through the notes, watch the video, and listen to this video, and hopefully you understand. If not, and send me an email, come to Office Hour, or ask me a question. Thanks.